<laughs> so yes, I'm Philippe, and uh, nice to meet you again. So let's go on, yeah. Yeah, so um, with the advent of Internet of Things, uh, we are uploading our physical data as well as our um, uh, our physical entities to the internet and we probably don't want people to have a peek into our personal lives and uh, uh, with with uh, let, let's talk about the hidden hidden uh, dangers of uploading your physical life to the internet um, uh, let's quickly take this example of Shorana I think most of you are uh, aware about um, it's a, it's it's kind of this uh, engine that uh, search things that are uh, not password protected or easily IoT devices that are available on internet, and probably what the uh, what the search results it looks like this, and it's quite scary for people, and uh, you probably don't want your personal life people uh, looking at you when you're presenting at FOSDEM, <laughs> looking at these your person what's happening in your personal life, and. Uh, uh, it's, it has a lot of potential target. It's just one example, and there are a lot of uh, p lot of examples uh, uh, for this. So, Project Things by Mozilla comes to the rescue. Um, it's the secure gateway to connect your things to internet, and uh, uh, Mozilla is trying to solve uh, address a big problem that people are think uh, it's it's by research that uh, the, you have to buy a lot of services to have IoT devices. And uh, you, uh, it can co compromise your data, and uh, the cost of setting up it's too high, and things like that. And uh, here at Mozilla, our main aim is to decentralize the Internet of Things and put put the people first. And our mission is to make it a more secure, private, and interpolable uh, uh, web of things. Uh, we, um, so. Uh, the inter project things uh, directly monitors your and controls your home over the web without a middleman. You don't need to pay subscriptions you, for uh, for the installations or monthly subscriptions. Your you can you have option to uh, not put your data on the cloud and uh, you can uh, you have basically you can expand the experience to multiple manufacturers you can create your own uh, adapters gateways and if you are a hobbyist you can use uh, Raspberry Pis and there are a number of hardware available and you can simply good you're good to go with them and uh, let's look at quickly look at the use cases that it can be used for it can be used to turn on and off your appliance or check if your kids are at home or uh, turn a light on and off and uh, so these applications of Internet of Things can be done by Things Gateway and uh, it's 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 an application layer it's not about uh, competing with the existing technologies and the protocols it's it's using rust uh, it, it can use rust json websocket oauth and uh, new technologies can also be added to it so it's not about competing with them but complying with them and working one by one to, together and uh, this example of let's uh, have a quick look at the Example of uh, Web of Things. Uh, say, so it's basically about giving a URL to a device, and uh, uh, in this in this case, we give this device name a toaster, and uh, we define that its its uh, its action uh, is uh, is uh, it's it's given a link when it pops the toast, and the event can be that the toast is ready. And things like that, giving and then the, there's a, a, a it's written in JSON with a simple example and the he, the links gives the properties, the events, the actions, and you and the web sockets and you can usually link them using URLs. And uh, currently the version for gateway things is 0 0.7. You can g just basically download an image uh, from the link and uh, g you're good to go. So you can have your existing devices, smart bulbs, uh, smart mirrors, cameras, and uh, things. And uh, you have the option to keep your data private and secure with yourself. And if you want the remote uh, remote access for your devices, if you want somehow to access them remotely, you can do them uh, using uh, a lot of tunnels. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. And uh, then uh, you can do updates on uh, via the web using Project Things. And uh, the, the the framework is basically composed of four components. The cloud, where you get the remote access and backup and updates of the devices. 
and the gateway that is the intermediator, intermediator between the, your, uh, uh, your uh, connectivity hub in home and your internet uh, or the cloud. And uh, the device framework is basically the thing and controller controls this uh, devices. You give them input and gives, uh, the, it gives them the output. So a thing can be any device, a Raspberry Pi or smart lamp or smart bulb. And uh, talking about the security perspective, so it uses HTTPS via the, for the tunne tunneling service and uses software like uh, PageKite. So uh, uh, you, can, uh, you, can access the cloud, you can access the devices remotely from your cloud. And uh, it, uh, uh, you can, it also creates a unique subdomain for each device. So uh, using let's, let's encrypt the TSL certificate, but uh, you can configure uh, your own uh, NAT, DNS, and TLS services. And uh, for the authentication, it uses uh, JSON web tokens. And, if you, uh, and also it has OAuth authorization when you log into the to project things UI. You have this OAuth for third party applications and uh, services. Um, so to get started with this, uh, you just need to download the uh, image for, for Raspberry Pi. Philip will tell more about in this detail. And it's perfect for hackers and makers like us. So Philip. OK, so I will get, show you some quick instruction how to get started and implement uh, your stuff. <laughs> So, so once you get download the image, just dump it to SD card, boot it. The system has a Wi-Fi um, server, and you can configure from your domain and your credential. That's pretty easy. There is no need to connect to the cloud services and so on. This is optional. And uh, once uh, the system is running, you have you can connect for using a web browser to your UI, and then you can add some add-on and add virtual things to. To, to start and try some interaction between them. So as you can see on the screen, there is a representation of each element. So there is two class of them. One is a sensor, other are actuators. And you have some control from the web uh, UI. So technically speaking, what are the web things? So that's pretty simple. So they're just a HTTP server implementing a REST API. And uh, they all connected to the gateway, so it's not a peer-to-peer -peer system. Even, even if it's technically possible, everything is connected to the gateway, and the gateway is dispatching and uh, updating a different value of the, the representation of the thing. So it's quite um, easy to implement because it's a very uh, simple description. This, this is defined in JSON. It's following a, a schema, which is uh, under review at W3C, as a specification. And uh, if you are a node you, a JavaScript developer, you can just install the node uh, package. Or if you want to go more into embedded or very constrained device, you can install NPM, um, sorry, IoTGS, which is a, um, an alternative runtime like a node, but for microcontroller. So this means you can de deploy your develop your application on a Linux system and deploy it to a microcontroller. So it's pretty optimized. That's a contribution from Samsung. It's using um, the JavaScript interpreter, which is, has a very reduced uh, footprint. And it's working on a um, POSIX uh, system, so it can be uh, Linux or Tizen RT for microcontroller. And if you don't want to know, know more detail, it's always be a lecture tomorrow in JavaScript room. So here is a minimal code I shared it to you about um, how to use this. So first, you need to import a, a package. And then you describe a thing, a thing as a name. And let's add a, a single property to the thing, which is described by this uh, constructor function. So this is an old school JavaScript, because we're not supporting later Stagma standard, because we want to uh, uh, get it supported by very uh, weak uh, microcontroller. So that's uh, ECMAS 5.1 uh, standard. And once uh, we have inherited our property object, we add uh, just a value, we search the default value. Here and uh, then there is a the server on the this uh, local port which is describing the things. So it has a name, several properties listed, and each property has a different endpoint. So if you connect directly to the endpoint, you have the value of the property. So the property can be, uh, let's say, a, a, a sensor, or can be an actuator, or it can be something different, anything actually. So for instance, I uh, made a 
like a, a fake uh, sensor which is using a MQ MQTT source. So I don't know if you know about MQTT. This is a protocol very used in uh, IoT for it has a publishing uh, device which is publishing to a broker which is dispatching to different subscribers. So that's just an example. So I'm just connecting to my this uh, broker and I'm uh, on each update of uh, the top each topic each uh, let's say endpoint of the device I'm updating my web thing. So there is nothing physical here but it's, it's using the same the same uh, description. So that's nice, but maybe we can do something more generic. So for this, uh, Mozilla has de defined a, a way to, it's extensible by, def by design and you can add a lot of add-ons. So for instance, uh, you can add support for some class of device, like uh, recently we have some CCTV camera we have supported as web things. You can support any protocol, you can support eventually online services, web services. Yeah, email, whatever, it's really flexible enough. And of course, uh, input output like a sensor, uh, input pin of uh, the device or any other uh, protocol. And uh, it can be implemented in your language, in your favorite language. You just need uh, to use a IPC mechanism to speak to the gateway and it's using a nano message um, library. And most of them are already supported by the community. So feel free to, this is the next level. First, you try to implement things. And if you want to make it more generic and available to the community, you can just submit um, another add-on. So let's try to show you uh, something real. Uh, here we go. Uh, is it full screen again? OK. So here I'm connected uh, to my home. So let me just uh, show you different, uh, maybe I should reload the page. So here is a dashboard where you have all the diverse, different things that can be uh, listed individually. And uh, I can also here I have a webcam and uh, I can turn on the light home from the dashboard and also I have a, an app here I can use. Mm, maybe I'm disconnected. <laughs> so let's do it the dumb way. Um, okay. So light is coming. I have different uh, devices. So for instance, I have a, where is it? I have a lamp here. I can turn it on and change some properties of the light. So this light is open source hardware from my friend Leon, which is in the room. Where is it? Where is he? Here. Are you speaking today or tomorrow? Today, tomorrow. Today, okay. So watch uh, the open hardware. Or, uh, room I think is speaking over there. So let's change the color. So I change it to to green and I have also another device here which is a sensor so it's now updating. So also I have this uh, board with uh, running IoTGS so this is a Node version for microcontroller. It has different uh, input output and I have this uh, sensor here connecting to my flower, which is monitoring the moisture of the soil. So one use case I can do is trying to get a notification when something is bad happening. And uh, also something fun I can show you is this uh, activity pub uh, messenger. So if I, this is uh, an actuator, this means the thing that is not producing data, but uh, uh, consuming data. So if I say, let's say any text, um, how do you use it? I'm a Linux user, so I'm not used to Mac keyboard. Is this a bad thing? No. <laughs> so, uh, hi, Mozillian. So, I'm setting a text and it should update in this frame uh, in a couple of uh, seconds. Here it is. So here is a, 
um, an activity pub uh, feed uh, using Mastodon, so you can subscribe. So now maybe we can do something smarter. For instance, we can create some uh, rules. So I think I created the one already, but let me do it again. Um, so you had some rules using this uh, tool, and there, from there, you can describe uh, some uh, some uh, link between sensors. So let's say I have this uh, light sensor, and I want to send something to Mastodon. Uh, so I'm using my Mastodon actuator. I'm linking some properties. So when level of light is above 100, I can say to the world internet that sun is coming back. Uh, okay, the property are linked. You can link several. So let's set it get back to the main menu. Okay, the uh, value is 34, and if I'm turning on my um, uh, this no this lamp here, so this is my desk lamp, and this is Leon's lamp. So now, okay, I, I oh no, I had another rule, but that set was set up that uh, my floor needs an umbrella because it's uh, it's going to burn. <laughs> Uh, so, for instance, I shared you this MQTT uh, code, and I have the device uh, running here. So the temperature sensor is, uh, not the temperature, I have the humidity sensor here, uh, which is uh, about 31, which is uh, measuring here in this room. This is not a real use case, but for the demonstration. And, um, Something I can also share to you that I have uh, some sensor home. I don't know if you know this project. It's called uh, OpenSense Map. So you can uh, upload data to some uh, community repository where about real time data. So I'm monitoring in my city uh, air quality. So in Brittany, this is uh, some value I made. So this is uh, not uh, military grade. Uh, Accuracy, but uh, that's what I observed, and I read on the newspaper when coming to Brussels that, uh, for instance, in uh, Bangkok, they decided to close the schools because uh, the hair was too uh, polluted. So I wanted to check on the, this map, and I observed that uh, the level of above uh, 20, that's uh, pretty big if you compare. So this means that uh, in my uh, dashboard, I have, uh, where is it? Uh, here, this... Uh, Air quality sensor is a remote source, but it's just uh, added like uh, it was local to the system. So it's very flexible in terms of uh, the API are very simple, and then you can change everything you want, and everything is staying on your own control. There is no, no things uh, getting out of control and uh, no risk of uh, privacy leaks. And, uh, and it's easier for us for company because they have uh, today to comply to GPR regulation, as was explained just before. So if it's privacy by design, this means the data stay inside the user or the consumer environment. It's very simple for the company because it doesn't have to comply all those requirements in terms of data accessibility, revocation, and so on. I think that we are done now. Did I forget anything about it? No? All right. We have five minutes? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can go on. Yeah. So, yeah, to get, get involved in this project, uh, you can uh, contribute to by either building a thing or creating an adapter, adapter that's, that's like a bridge in between the IoT devices and existing protocol on the web. And uh, you can also hack on projects things, explore it on this using this link. And uh, uh, we have uh, IRC support and uh, we are on Twitter uh, about this if you want to find out more. Um, that's it. Uh, 
you be aware of your privacy so that your uh, dog door doesn't locks you out or you don't have to buy a firewall for your toaster in the future. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Or no? Yeah. So uh, you showed sort of uh, some sensor data logging uh, there using a, another site. Um, is, do you have any sort of plans for sort of uh, long-term data logging, that sort of thing? Or, to be or how, how does that integrate into this framework? Okay, so I can answer this one if you want. <laughs> so yeah, there is um, an open uh, request about uh, using a time series database. Do you know what this is about? The question is about, uh, technically it's feasible, we all know how the software, but if we want to do some good data mining, which means we need to collect a lot of data, so I said it's a trade-off and uh, between uh, what the user wants to do. So if he has another, let's say, uh, a NAS on his own gateway, he can store how many data he wants. In the case of the Raspberry Pi on the SD card, maybe this is not uh, the, the smarter ID. But um, yeah, there, there is some uh, open issue about this. So this, this would be done on time. I cannot say when. But uh, yeah, we have talking about different solutions. If you have any suggestion about using some specific database for this, that can be relevant to, to let me know. But uh, so far, the discussion is about just you using uh, my uh, SQLite database or something like this. Yeah. Thank you. Any other question? And yeah. you can eventually connect to the third party who can store this on the cloud, or on your own cloud for a service like uh, I think that can be wise also to do this uh, in a different, uh, outside the gateway. Hi. Um, uh, are there any, do you know of any project integrating voice assistant or anything like that? Especially the open source ones would be interesting, of course. Actually, actually there is one already. Yeah. Yeah, you can play music and do recording and stuff like that. It's already there. Okay, yeah. So there is, Mozilla has a big project called uh, Deep Speech. I'm not sure it's, uh, it wasn't scheduled today, but it has been delayed or amended. So there is some experiments shown of this. I didn't try it. But I know that from the community uh, add-on repository, there is uh, someone who made an uh, integration about uh, snip.io. You know this company? It's a French company which is doing uh, Offline, offline uh, voice recollection, and somebody implemented on uh, Raspberry Pi. But I wanted to try it, but uh, I didn't uh, make too much effort because uh, I think I need to set up something. I didn't. Uh, I was ready to do it. But I think it's, it's there. Yeah. Any other question? No. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. So...